could import that video into your computer. Of course, it took all your hard drive, uh, you know, five minutes of video. It was difficult to use, but we're getting more transparent. We're getting uh, better at it. We got this camera, a hard drive camera, MPEG-4 camera. So this is closer to what we have today. And it makes things easier. Shoot, you know, point, shoot, hook up to your computer. It's not such a big file anymore. You can download it to your computer, save it, etc. Today we have this. Um, and just compare. How many buttons do you see? Well, visible, there's, uh, there's a few. There's one here, a bunch here, etc. Today we got this. Um, these are the newest uh, cameras, video cameras. Um, interesting, one big button right here and that's all you need to know. Just press it right, to record, press it to stop. That's transparency. That's how design is catching up to our level of experience. You don't have to worry uh, so much. And let me grab this. You don't have to worry so much about so many features, so many buttons, tape, cables, you know, uh, carrying this around, you know. Put it in your pocket now, uh, your breast pocket, and, and it fits. Pull it out, press the button, record, press the button, stop. So, in that regard, design, that's where design is, is moving towards us. And now it's our part. We need to move towards that solution, right? So, in light of those two concepts, um, I, I, I guess the task that I'm proposing is re-ask the question. Um, why use technology in the classroom? But the question is really, what does technology afford? What does technology do for us and our students? Um, in general, we have a few answers. We have, um, for instance, oops, sorry. We have general answers, and it's not because, I hope, let me, let me pull this down before we go on. Um, I hope the first answer that comes to your mind is not because everybody else is doing it. That's the wrong answer. Okay? <laughs> um, why use technology in the classroom? That can lead you to that answer, right? Because everybody's doing it, or because uh, our kids are doing it, and we got to do what they're doing. Um, if we reformulate the question, what does technology afford? What does technology allow you to do that you couldn't do before? Then we, we arrive at a different set of answers. For example, we build uh, communities of practice that span geographic barriers. Yesterday there was a little talk about communities of practice. And communities of practice are groups with similar learning interests, similar learning needs that meet to practice, right? In a classroom we have, classrooms could be called communities of practice if we do all our practice in the classroom. Um, but now we can have communities of practice that span geographic barriers. And uh, for instance, we want to practice by talking about our favorite subject. And my favorite subject might be tattoos. Not that it is, but it might be. <laughs> Nobody else here, I'm sure, is interested in tattoos. Have, can, can we practice based, you know, talking about tattoos with anybody here? You know, feeling as excited as I feel about tattoos. I'm talking about the next one I'm going to get. Um, but with technology, what technology affords us is going out there and finding that community that is interested in tattoos as much as I am. And we build the community of practice with them, right? Nobody in the classroom is going to talk about tattoos, fine. I'll just go <laughs> talk about tattoos with uh, my friends online, you know, and practice with them. Um, communities of practice also, uh, you could talk about uh, the pace at which students learn. You know, in, in our classroom, all our students learn at a different pace. Sometimes we force pace. We, we ask 
and we have to go with the average, right? We ask the fast students to slow down, and we push the slow students to pick up the pace, right? Because we have to move on, and sometimes we just leave them behind. Uh, community, communities of practice based on, on that pace of learning. Well, if we can't have it here in, in the classroom, technology allows us to uh, have our students join a community of practice that works at their own pace, for instance. Another uh, reason, or another thing that technology affords, it, it's engaging, yes. Um, I hope, I, I worked really hard on this uh, presentation, I hope that you, are, you were engaged by the picture of the leaf, you know. Uh, technology makes things engaging. It allows me to, to make things a little bit more engaging. And um, that might be translated into, uh, you know, that's what they do, that's what, that's what they like. But it's a little bit uh, more than that. It's about capturing their attention, you know. Um, technology allows me to create personal media. Um, this is, Personal media is a concept we could talk about uh, in, in a separate session, in a separate workshop. It's something I'm excited about. The idea that technology today allows me to take mass media, reshape it, and make it my own, put my voice in. And that's terribly motivating. The idea of uh, taking your favorite song, for instance, and I don't know if uh, you serve YouTube a lot, but I'd say probably 20% of YouTube videos are songs with images from a cartoon, you know? Uh, and you can watch those, uh, and kids actually spend the time cutting their cartoons, putting them to the music, and creating something new. You know, um, that's personal media, and I think it's really powerful. I mean, that's leisurely used, but if we can find the method to apply personal media in education, and I think it's very easy to do, um, it's something really exciting. Um, of course, we know that technology allows us or affords us access to new resources, unlimited. And then the problem is choice, right? The problem is choosing the best resources or the appropriate resources. Um, and of course, uh, bridging distance. Technology allows us to bridge distance. But I want to, I want to make a, like take a take that question and twist it around just a little bit. And uh, say, well, the question is, why use technology in education? But actually, the real question I think we should be asking is, why should I use technology in education? And this refers to, and we go back to those concepts of affordance and transparency. I am an individual with a set of skills a set of experiences, needs, there are things I want to do. So what technology affords me is different than what it will afford my colleague in the room next door, right? Uh, my students have different needs than the ones uh, in the room next door. So the question is not why use technology in education? That's very general and, and you know, the question is really a personal question. Why should I use technology in education? I don't have an answer for that. That's a personal answer. I mean, um, I know I should use technology in education because it affords me. Uh, well, why should I use technology? <laughs> well, I know it, it, it would allow me and my students to um, Communicate even though I can't be in the classroom every day. That's one one thing that for me it comes to my mind right now. But what I do have is a lot more questions. Um, you can reshape this. Why should I use technology in education? Into what will this technology afford me? Or I mean, what will this technology allow me to do that I couldn't do before? Or you can ask, more importantly, I think, 
What will this technology allow my students to do that they couldn't do before? Right? How transparent is the experience? In other words, is the technology distracting us from the learning? And this is something that we need to worry about. If we're, if we're spending more time explaining the technology than actually doing the task that technology allows us to do, we have to rethink it. It's not a viable solution. We need either more experience or a better